The general procedure for measuring or assessing end feel is as follows. What I'm going to show here is demonstrate end feel for wrist extension. First thing you want to do is stabilize just proximal to the joint uh, whose end feel you are assessing. So here's the uh, the wrist joint right here, just distal to the ulnar head. And I'm going to stabilize just proximal to that. And then you want to take the bone or lever. In this case, it, uh, it's a number of bones to gather, uh, primarily um, controlled by the second and third metacarpals. Uh, you take that bone or lever that's just distal to that joint, and you take it to the end of its range. Now, as you take it through the uh, range, um, that'll happen fairly easily in a normal patient. Um, but as you get to the end of the range, you'll get to a point, probably right about there, where you start to feel some resistance uh, or increased resistance. And that's what's known as the first tissue stop. Uh, that's the beginning of your end feel. In order to assess the end feel, then, you take it from that first tissue stop, continue to apply pressure, until it won't move anymore. That's your second tissue stop. What you feel with the hand that's doing the moving between that first tissue stop and the second tissue stop is end feel. It's what the end of the range of motion feels like. So that's assessed with the hand that is actually moving the, um, the uh, lever or a bone distal to the joint whose end feel you are measuring and um, what you feel between that first tissue stop and second tissue stop. Sometimes um, in this case it kind of gives some resistance here and then it kind of evenly takes up more and more slack until you can't move it anymore and that's what we would call a firm end feel. Uh, there are times where that first tissue stop and the second tissue stop are essentially in the same place. It moves freely and then stops and won't go any farther. That's called a hard end feel. Um, the other types of end feel, which I, I can't really demonstrate with the wrist, there's a soft end feel uh, that occurs when the joint isn't the thing that actually brings you the second tissue stop, what brings you the second tissue stop is that the soft tissue on your two levers run into each other. That can happen, for example, at the elbow, uh, you can run into um, the muscle mass of the forearm and the muscle mass of the, the upper arm run into each other before you actually get to your second tissue stop. That's a soft end feel. The fourth type of end feel is an empty end feel, and that happens when your uh, patient or client actually never lets you get to the second tissue stop because it's too painful. So they'll say, they'll stop you or they'll, you know, cry out or something like that in pain. And um, so you actually never get there because the patient is guarding or, or it's too painful for them, and that's called an empty end feel. When you're checking your end feel, you should always check it just one joint at a time. So in this case, we're just assessing the, the wrist joint. Um, you could make an argument that there's really two joints in there, the radiocarpal joint and the midcarpal joint. Um, and there are some therapists that might uh, uh, you know, try to assess those separately, but for our purposes, we're going to uh, just call that the wrist joint. But it's one joint at a time, so this is how you would measure that end feel. If I were to take and try to measure it this way, that would be incorrect, because what I'm assessing now is end feel both for the wrist and for the MCP joints. If I'm way out here, I've got the wrist, the MCP, and the PIP joints, and I'm kind of assessing all of those end feels at the same time, and then you're not going to be able to uh, properly assess the end feel. When you assess end feel, the overpressure that you apply at the end should be smooth and even. You're just saying, okay, here's my first tissue stop, keep pushing, there's the second tissue stop. You don't bounce at all. Um, that would be an incorrect uh, procedure for end feel. When you measure end feel, all movement that is being done is passive. It's all from the therapist. The patient has to be totally relaxed and not helping at all in order to properly assess end feel.